had to cut back on the island to different things. And I, I was reading this week the other day where it was telling about elder people that, that lived on fixed incomes, was having to, to do without certain things. Amen. That they could pay for their health insurance and pay for different things and, and buy their medicine, I think, was what the story was about. And it sad me because we live in such a rich and pay. I get so sick and tired of uh, reading a little leaflet that comes out once or twice a year in the daily news. And Brother Dale, they'll print it out and it shows everybody's picture and it tells how much some people make. And I was reading the other day that the inventors of the Barbie doll they made $50 million or so many billion dollars last year. And I thought, yeah, with all that money and that fictitious doll, a man and people are making millions and millions of dollars off of it and rich people getting richer and the poor out here starving and striving amen just to buy their medication it's a sickening day today that we live in right. when those things happen the young boy woke up one morning didn't have a dime to his name and the next thing you know he's down feeding the halls and the bible says that he would vein and fill his belly with the us that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him verse 17 I read all that to get to this and when he came to himself and when he came to himself. You know what's wrong today with a lot of people? They're living in la la land. Hello? I said they're living in la la land. They're trying to pretend how happy they really are. They're trying to tell people how really good they are doing. But really, actually, they're miserable and they're wretched. And they're like the one in the book of Revelation. They haven't, uh, uh, they're not taken of the good things and, and tried the good things of God. They're trying to convince this world, hey, I've got it together. I've got everything I need. I've got everything that I want. I was reading about a, a, a multi-million dollar uh, baseball pitcher the other day that pitches baseball. I mean, he's a, he's a wealthy, wealthy man. Told about everything that he had, but he was battling depression. And I thought, that right there is living proof that all the money you can have in the world doesn't make happiness. All the possessions that you can pile up and have in your life, and that does not mean that you're going to be happy. You know what real happiness is? It's finding your place at the Father's house, amen, and living in that place. Amen, that God wants you to live. What happened to this young boy? Number one, he thought he could take control of his life when really he wasn't ready for the real world that was out there. Your room is ready. Your room is waiting at the Father's house. He came to himself. You know what he said? I'm tired of living it this way. I'm tired of living this way. He began to look at his clothes. And you know the first thing he thought of? Look at that garments that I'm wearing. He began to look where he was at, the job that he had. Then you know what he said? He said, my dad has people that work for him that have a whole lot more than what I've got, and I'm starving to death. Amen. I'm starving to death. My father, the Bible said, he, he, he said, how many hired servants of my father have bread enough in despair, and I perish with hunger? Now, he didn't just sit down there and, and begin to think about it. You ever want, read a cartoon or, or read a, a, a thing in the paper, and it'll show someone thinking, and over here it draws a little circle, and it tells what they're thinking, so you can read. I can imagine this young boy sitting down there for the Marshall Crow and just thinking, if I could get back home, my dad would take me back as a hired servant. I don't want to be a son. I'm not worthy to be a son. I'm telling you, friend, this is a perfect example of what it's going to take for you to get right with God and to stay right with God and to live for God. Amen. So many people live a life of pretending and a life of, of faking it until they can make it. But I'm telling you today, God wants the real McCoy. Amen. To rise to the occasion and for you to see yourself as you really are. In the sixth chapter of the book of Isaiah, the Bible talks about Uzziah, the king dying. And, and he was an uncle uh, of, of Isaiah. And Brother Marshall, the Bible says that in the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah said, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. And he told about the seraphims flying through, and he told about all the things that was there. And then he heard the voice of God, and he began to tell the Lord how unworthy he really was, and how undeserving that he was. And then one of the seraphims flew down and took a, a tongue, amen, and took a coal of fire over the altar. Amen.
man and, and, and placed that truck, that coal of fire on Isaiah's lips. And then Isaiah said, Here am I, Lord. Send me. You know what we got to do? we got to see the mess we're living in. we got to see the condition that our life has got to before we'll ever, ever, ever change and turn our lives back to God. Friend, you've got to come to yourself. You've got to wake up some morning and say, I'm not dreaming, am I? This is, this is really me. Ain't that, I'm going to shake myself. You know, I sat in the courtroom with a boy, uh, or with a family last Friday in Ashland, Kentucky. And in that courtroom, that judge, amen, when he had mercy on that young boy, I thought he did one of the greatest, most honorable things I've ever seen a judge do in my life. And we have that right here in this community also. But I saw that judge as he believed forward in his chair and he called that boy by his first name out of respect to that young man now he could have said he could have called him many things but he called him by his first name and that boy was standing there but when he did that that boy raised his head up and, and so it made connection and the judge said this to that young boy he said aren't you tired of living the way that you're living aren't you tired John of living the way that you're living he said you can do better than what you're doing. You know what God's saying to us today? Look at yourself. Look inside yourself and see what God's trying to tell you today that there is a better life and there is a life that you can live and enjoy and have peace and have contentment and have a home. You know, he told that boy, he said, son, he said, have you read what the boy had done? And I'm not going to all that. But he read what the young man had done. And he said, you know, he said, you know who you're doing this to? You're doing this to your family, to the people that love you. And there sat a mother with tears running off her face. And, and, and I felt so sad for her. And he said, you're hurting the ones that love you the most. Who is it that usually gets hurt the most? Amen. When we go out and live in sin, and we go out and do the things that, that we want to do. And, and you know what I, I wish he would have went on and said to that little boy? I wish he would have went on and said, John, aren't you tired of being selfish? Aren't you tired of being me and my little world? Aren't you tired of saying, it's all about me and nobody else? But oh, listen, friend, that's exactly what this young boy did. He said, it's all about me. Hey, I got the world in the palm of my hand. But when he wound up, all he had was a hog pen, no clothes, no money, no job, no home, no bed to sleep in. And he came to himself. When will we come to ourselves and see that without God in our life? Listen, I want to tell you something. Scientists is not going to teach you. Preachers today have stopped preaching it. But I'm telling you today, anybody that doesn't have God in their life, you're like a ship on the sea without a sail. You're just at the mercy of the wind. You're at the mercy of the wave. You've got to come to yourself. You've got to wake up. I'm telling you, God burnt this message in my heart to preach today. And had He not done that, I'd have preached about mothers like I normally do. He said, I'll, come, I'll go home. I'm going to rise. Number one, he had to get up out of the hall mess. He had to get up out of the hall mess. He had to rise. Every week, we got to rise up out of the, the mess that we get ourselves in. Well, I can't do it. People won't help me. Yes, they will. That's not an excuse. Well, I, I just, I've done too much. That's not an excuse. Ain't that Paul, uh, uh, the apostle of God, had done a lot, but God cleaned him up and God used him. I'm telling you, there is forgiveness. There is a room waiting for you at the Father's house. And then if you'll come, he'll help you. He said, I will arise. That means I look to the to get back up. I'm going to get back up. And I'm going to my father. You know all people need to do, Brother Danny, is go back to where they started from. Did you know most of the time that we start, Sister David, most of the time, if we'll go back to where we started from, amen, and where we left God out of our lives, we'll find that He's right there, amen. He's willing, He's waiting, and He's got open arms ready to help us. I must turn it. He said, I'm going back to my Father, but He's going back with an attitude adjustment. He's going back, and His Father didn't even have to adjust His attitude. The